Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today uh, we are going to be returning to uh, Panzer Corps 2 for the first time, I want to say, in like, not quite a year and a half, I believe, according to Steam anyway, the last time I played Panzer Corps 2 was in November of 2021. I believe that was around the time that the Spanish Civil War DLC came out, and so I wanted to give it a look because yesterday or I guess if you're watching this live today, a brand new DLC came out called The Battle of the Bulge. And so I wanted to see what that looked like. Uh, according to the write-up, I think it said the DLC was sort of more smaller, more contained battles. So like rather than it being a battle of the bulge being one scenario covering the whole thing, it would be like one portion of the battle, and it would sort of, the whole campaign would be built around that larger battle. Usually in Panzer Corps, you'll have like the whole operation to take Paris, that whole post-Dunkirk scenario would be one battle for the entire front. Well, this would be not that. This would be more like operational level type scenarios, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays. I might be a little rusty. I haven't played Panzer Corps 2 in quite some time, but... You know, it is one of sort of the... I don't know if I'd say Panzer Corps 2 is a classic, but it's based on the classic SSI Panzer General series. Um, and so, you know, this is definitely a pillar in the wargaming space on the more beer and pretzel size, but certainly, I think, a worthwhile look. I enjoyed my time with it when it first came out, so let's go ahead and jump in without further ado to Battle of the Bulge. We're just going to play on the default, which is Colonel Difficulty. It's been a while since I played, like I said, so that's what we're going to play at. It's December of 1940. Oh, and I, this is also the first DLC where you play as the Allies. So you can see all the previous DLCs here appear to be just from the German point of view, so we're going to be playing as the Allies here. Uh, but in December 1944, U.S. Army units in the densely forested Ardennes region between Belgium and Luxembourg are surprised by a major German offensive which aims to split the Allied front, cross the Meuse River, and even reach the vital port of Antwerp. Can you stop the enemy onslaught? It covers the winter of 1944 to 1945, and the campaign size is either 9 or 12 scenarios. I'm assuming a bit of dynamism, depending on how you do in the previous scenarios. That's usually how these types of campaigns work in this sort of Panzer General-inspired uh, series, where you, like, if you get a major victory, you go one way. If you get a minor victory, you go another, those kind of things. So let's go ahead and jump in here and see what we've got. Okay, so I gotta set my character up, I guess. So, what do I consider my strengths? How many of these do I have to do? Two options? Alright, so I would say that I am... I'm not meticulous at planning. <laughs> uh, old guard, what does that mean? At the end of each mission, all dead units are reformed with one point of strength and have... Ooh, that's an interesting... So you get all of your dead units back? Huh. Twice as much captured equipment. I'd like the 25% experience growth. I think that's valuable. So this costs two. So basically what you can do is you can choose one of these perks to make you good. And then if you want, you can take a negative experience. Um, you know, here. So I could do green army, which would give me three more options. So like... If I've got green units, it re elite replacements are limited to three times per mission, so you're not allowed to keep pumping in green or you know elite replacements to replace your losses. That sounds like an interesting option, actually. Um, what's arrogant? No combat predictions. I can't do that. That would be nuts. Hmm. Never accepts surrender. Ooh. So yeah, like, you could do a negative thing, too. Green Army's tempting. Because if I do that, like, okay, sure, I probably don't have a lot of experienced units in the Battle of the Bulge as the Americans, right? So... Trophies of War could be interesting as well, considering we're fighting the Germans. So, like, having Tiger tanks might be nice. Maybe we do that. And then we can do... Just 
just trying to see here. Yeah, perimeter control. Deep recon could be nice too. What is that? Map around all primary objectives is permanently revealed. Well, but we're going to be on the defensive, right? So does that matter if they're my own territories? That's So I'm not going to do that because that I think would matter more if we were on the offensive. More prestige might be nice, but it, it probably matters less if I'm not able to do a whole lot of elite replacements. So we'll just call ourselves the Butcher. Morning, sir. Looks like the front will stay calm. But for now, you still have work to do. Following the capture of Aachen, our attacks through the nearby Hurtin Forest have bogged down, so Top Brass is planning a new offensive toward the Roar River Dams. We'll have to seize them attacked, as their destruction would flood large areas and severely delay our progress. Currently, we just want a better jump-off point for the planned operation, so you're going to lead the veteran 2nd Infantry Division to take the crossroads on the Valderscheid Heights near Monschau. Primary objective, take Valderscheid Crossroads. Destroy two artillery covering the crossroads. Okay. Cavalry elements in Monschau and the still green 99th Infantry Division at our flanks are not under your command. Oh, well, that's gonna suck. Focus on your objectives and advance carefully with sufficient artillery to back up as bad weather may severely limit air support. However, Top Brass wants this job done in a few days. Good hunting. Alright, so that's the briefing. Uh, I guess I get a, a hero. What is he good at? Consolidator. Con consolidate more than normal strength into single unit. Increasing maximum overall strength, which the unit can have by plus five. Okay. We also have a fierce fighter. Plus one attack for each adjacent enemy unit. Man, we get a lot of heroes here. Okay, so let's do this. We've got our units on the left here. You can see all these boys set up. We probably want to use the hero that gives me a stronger unit or the ability to have a stronger unit with our artillery or with our tank. I think, because we don't have a lot of those, so I'd give him a hero. I He's a 105, though, so he's artillery, isn't he? M4E3 105? I would think those would be usually used in artillery support. Um, heavy infantry, give them fierce fighter. And, you know, we could assign two to a single unit, but these U.S. engineers will give them the cheap replacements and rapid fire. All right, so we've got these boys. Do we want to go ahead and... Can we upgrade these guys? How much? Oh, I've got 4,500 prestige. So I could overstrength them. And spend a ton of money doing it. Almost a thousand. But we're going to do it. Because I don't know what I'm going to run into. So I'm going to spend a boatload of money. The super tanks. 20 hit points for those boys. I guess this recon car. Okay, so. Um, and I can't deploy anyone else, so I had a little bit of bandwidth to deploy more stuff. I don't think I have any airfields. Oh, I do have some. Can you buy air units in this battle? That might have been a mistake to overstrength that. No, no air units are available. I figured as much. Battle of the Bulge, they're going to be like, no air units, because, you know, Battle of the Bulge. Um, alright, so we've got German units on our flank in these trenches. Our objective is to move forward here and take Valderscheid. So as you can see, like, within the Greater Battle of the Bulge campaign, this is a very, you know, confined engagement. Compared to what's coming, presumably, once the Germans counterattack us. But I'm glad we've got the uh, the heavier version of the, sh of the Sherman. I don't have anything else that needs to deploy. Everything's already on the map, so we'll end the deployment phase. It's snowing, aircraft won't be able to move or attack. Well, we don't have any aircraft. Actually, technically, we do have the L2 Grasshopper. Did we even deploy that thing? Where is it, anyway? That's up here. But they can't move because of the snow, so. All right, so we've got enemy artillery. Or these are strong points. I don't know if they're actually artillery. So let's move our 
artillery up this way? Mm, they're still going to be out of range of the strong points. How many turns away? We got 16. I always like to move my artillery in a way where they automatically come off the trucks. So if you move where this little circular dot is, what that means is basically the unit won't go into their trucks. They'll just move by foot. If you move to an area where you've got like the half track or truck symbol, but nothing else, that means those units, they can move all the way with their trucks, but they stay mounted up, which makes them very vulnerable to enemy attacks. Or if you move to a section where they've got the truck with a little down sort of arrow, that means they move there and they dismount the same turn, so they are not sort of sitting ducks when the enemy comes knocking. All right. Although I believe when you move by truck like that, you cannot attack the same turn. So, like, we can move this way. They're adjacent to the strong point, but they can't actually attack. So we're moving up somewhat cautiously. Oh, nice. We can do one to four here. I'll gladly do that. Can I, I can move my half track over also. We'll go one to four. So these guys are rangers, so they can attack this fortification much more effectively than my other infantry. I didn't quite destroy it, though. Damn. My artillery should be able to hit them next turn, I think, once they move. And we'll get going here. So the objective is pretty simple. Take Valdescheid and destroy the enemy artillery, I guess. Covering Valdescheid. I don't know if these count as the artillery or if there's other positions. But at least we seriously weaken the first strong point. I'm hoping this is a relatively easy mission, but we'll see. Maybe the attack will begin during our attack, and then we'll get new objectives. Anyway, we destroyed that strong point. They tried to attack us. We shot back. Same thing happened on the right flank here. Yeah, that's not the artillery. Okay. All right, so our uh, heavy infantry will attack this fortification finish it off we'll wait to move till after my recon is a chance to investigate the area around can my engineers clear these mines they can nice so engineers this is a minefield here and it actually if we were to move any other unit into it they might take casualties or they might not be able to clear it very effectively but now that i go ahead here i can go uh you know I can clear it just with my engineers. I don't know why they're flamethrowing it, but the mines are gone now, so. Hell yeah. Really getting the vibe of, you can see here the forecasted attack. If I move up here against these infantry, seven armored on our end lost to zero for the enemy. So really not feeling that. It does look like we can switch this to be an artillery unit here. So that's really what we probably should do. I, I, I might have wasted that money making the artillery... Sherman over strength because it's really not an ideal tank. But it is what it is, I guess. Alright, let's move infantry on the right flank here forward. We're not going to attack this infantry, probably. I don't want my recon car to be up in the front lines because they're pretty vulnerable. The recon cars are good at letting you see stuff, but they are not good at, you know, actually fighting when they're attacked. I want to get my artillery up further because we can actually, if the enemy attacks my infantry, like, if they attack this recon car, this infantry, this artillery here, these 105 millimeters will fire in support. But if they attack these guys, I don't think they will because the enemy's outside my range. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Move our anti tank gun up on the left. Widen our front a bit. 
Still snowing, so I can't use my one air unit. I was playing Ultimate General Civil War the other day. Uh, Ultimate General American Revolution a couple weeks back. I haven't played Civil War in a little while. Looks like tomorrow's turn is going to be cloudy, but not snowy. So... Is this the beginning of the attack up here? Turn two? Oh, there's enemy artillery. When you see a green icon, or green number, that means your unit is being suppressed, but they're not actually taking casualties. When you see a red heart, that means they're being killed. And that's the strength they lose. Alright. Artillery's gonna support on the right. We'll do a mass attack, so multiple units will attack this enemy. They'll drive him back. I'd like to destroy them, but I don't think I can. Alright, so there's an enemy artillery unit back. Oh, that's a flak unit. Oh, God. All right, let's see if we can... All right, so we destroyed the flak unit. A little bit less valuable considering they're not, you know, it's not really air weather, but I can bring my air, my air recon unit over here to get a better eye on what might be going on with less risk now that we destroyed the flak unit. Let's hit this machine gun post. We'll deal with the enemy artillery shooting at us. But we do damage it a bit. Alright, let's hit these guys so they can't effectively attack. The, the suppression carries over turn to turn also, so if I suppress these bad guys... Suppression lasts. I'm waiting for the shoot, the other shoe to drop. I'm waiting for the enemy to hit us hard, but so far not. Oh, there's some recon cars at least. More artillery hitting us. So our heavy infantry here is taking heavy casualties. Our infantry up here also taking heavy casualties. 50% casualties in this infantry unit. As a reminder, we can only do elite re reinforcements three times in the turn, uh, in the battle. But these guys lost almost all their strength, so we're going to do that now. They are going to be somewhat suppressed. You can see they're red. That means they're very combat ineffective. Reinforcements for these guys too, so we can only do one more set of elites. Ooh, our recon car over here, or our anti-tank gun should be more effective against a recon car. We'll use our artillery to support. Let's see if they retreat. Apparently not. There they go. Pulling back now. Right, we'll clear that minefield there for this turn. Move those fresh troops up there. I think they get experience for clearing the minefield too, so... this level 105 
All right, moving our artillery up, and it's snowy again, so I, once again, I can't use my air power here. I don't know what the troops up near Moscow, like, ma I don't know if they matter or not. Again, the game sort of told us, you don't command these troops, but it didn't really provide context on why we care about what's going on up there, unless there's going to be something that changes, like the actual Battle of the Bulge starts, because this is all before the Battle of the Bulge. I, the only way it makes sense is if something's going to happen up here, and then the game's going to be like, now you have to do something. At least that's my my read of the situation. All right. We do want to try and take the enemy artillery out. So it's kind of why I'm waiting on... Is there a... Do I have to take it by a certain turn? No? Just take it? Okay. Hit him with the big one. I think these are... Yeah, the 155 long toms. Alright, so we hit him three times with artillery. They are now red, which I believe means they won't even shoot back. Take the experience hit there by using regular reinforcements. Nice, they surrendered. Okay, so we destroyed that enemy infantry unit. Take the prestige hit there, or the experience hit there. We'll take the artillery fire here as we go in to finish off this blockhouse on the left flank. And now the enemy artillery on the left and on the right, theoretically, will be exposed. Pull the uh, anti-tank guns back so they're less vulnerable. Move the infantry forward. If the enemy does attack, maybe they're going to be running into, into guns. And we'll move forward to the next turn. The Puma. I think that's a Puma. Attacked our infantry again there. They really love their uh, recon cars or whatever. They're kind of spreading their artillery fire out a bit. Hitting a few different units. Alright, that recon car might be in trouble. Apparently not. It's still raining. Okay, so now it's not snowing, it's raining. Gotcha. Hey, sea bass. How you doing? All right. These these are packs. There's enemy artillery back here. I know it. There you go. Should have moved the artillery first. I'm trying to take these artillery pieces out because that's my objective. But we got one of them. So we're down to... We need to destroy one more artillery. Drive that guy back. We didn't destroy him, but we did drive him back. I was hoping that would clear the way for my recon car to pull out of here, but I guess not. So we'll just spend the prestige to get the crappy reinforcements and pray, I guess. All right, anyway, one less artillery piece. We'll also attack these guys because they're somewhat suppressed. 
So we'll drive them off. Okay, let's see what happens next turn. I literally just played, started playing this for the first time, like, 30 minutes ago. Sea bass, so no idea. I don't, I don't really have a strong opinion yet. No, you retreated the wrong direction. You're gonna get destroyed. And they surrendered. Well, there goes the recon car. Wait, no, don't do that. Can I undo my move? I don't want him getting attacked by the enemy anti-tank guns. Can we destroy this guy? Finish off those infantry here. Well, wow, technically this encircles the Germans in the city we're trying to take. Very nice. Okay. Alright, so they got one... Infantry unit here of, of Folks Grenadiers, so they should be relatively weak. Another Folks Grenadier unit here. So these are all sort of second rate German troops, or at least the two I just selected. The artillery on the right there is still giving us a bit of a pain in the ass, but we just finished off that bunker there. Sometimes the AI is fairly poor at deciding to attack in situations where they really should not attack. Nice suppression there, actually. Or should we just reinforce? How much does their experience fall? By more than half? Jesus. This is a really pain. I should not have gone with a... Hey, we'll just do the trait where you lose experience when you, re you only have a limited number of elite reinforcements. This is a bad decision to do that. Pursue and destroy. All right, so we destroyed that infantry unit here. We've got the enemy surrounded. All right, so we'll go for the artillery next turn and Valdershide immediately after. All right, so they do attack our anti-tank gun here. We have artillery that fires in support. Breaks up the attack a bit. The armored car here with a flamethrower got back to not suppress status, which I, I do not like that at all, so I'm gonna go ahead and pound it. Go ahead and destroy that enemy anti-tank gun to the northeast of the objective.
That's just suppression level four, right? Guess we'll find out. Yep, okay. Keep their heads down. Pound the boys in the objective. Now I can do, I believe, unlimited elite reinforcements between battles. So I'm kind of tempted to let units that are already under strength stay under strength. And just... Oh no. Of course, then that happens and they get destroyed. Well, that didn't work out. Let's hit the artillery with the infantry. We brought our 105mm guns down to sort of direct fire on the enemy. ground, two to four. High ground gives us a bonus. Okay. Hopefully we don't lose any more units. And the infantry comes in to attack our tanks and walks into a murderer's row. Wow, we did a lot of damage to them. Meanwhile, the anti-tank gun took a few casualties, but whatever. Directly attacking artillery piece. Drive it off. Finish it off. Got it. Secondary objective accomplished. Finish off the half track. Not too worried about on the experience for the uh, anti-tank gun, I guess. Just don't die, boys. We didn't finish him off, so we'll hold off one more turn. I don't think there's any reason to wait, not wait another turn. I don't think there's like a destroy it by this turn for a major victory. Oh. That might be bad. What is that? Enemy self-propelled gun. Okay. Dead. Oh, not dead. I'll take two to one. take the town there you go nice job sir you can hopefully enjoy a little break now before we launch our next move toward the Roar river dams historical info the second infantry division took valdescheid on december 16th despite heavy resistance shortly before the enemy units along the siegfried line suddenly went into strict radio silence but u.s forces remained unaware that a major german offensive was getting underway all right so we did lose a few units here destroyed we gained some experience, but we also lost quite a bit because of the rules that we had around uh, sort of mid-battle reinforcements, if you will. 
fired me for that action? Maybe, Ban, maybe. But we won the battle nonetheless. So we can either defend Manchao Elsborn or Elsborn Loshum. G2 assessment. The Manchao Elsborn line seems to be easier to defend, while the area south of Loshum looks extremely vulnerable. Okay. Is one of these historical and one not, or is it just a decision on what we want to do? I don't really know how these decisions impact anything. Is it the same units? Two different locations, I get that, but is it... Is it just a difficulty thing? I'm not really sure. I wish the game told me what I was doing. I guess we'll go with Charles Spawn. They think it's easier to defend, so we should probably do that, right? The smart commander doesn't look for a harder fight. But the game, it might it might give me different options. <laughs> Uh. German artillery is busy this morning, sir. They certainly put our forward troops on notice. The enemy even uses large searchlights to illuminate our lines. However, for now, the top brass is not too concerned. They think the Germans may launch a few local counterattacks only. Well, I guess things always look better if you're miles away from the front. Ain't that the truth? Jeep patrols are constantly scouting the area. But we're unaware about enemy formations behind the Siegfried line. So prepare for anything. Just in case, if things get messy, conduct an elastic defense to preserve fighting strength. As our troops are stretched thin here, we could be in trouble. If the enemy can still pull off a larger offensive, abandon the forward positions if needed. As long as we hold the Mancho Elsborn area, we'll remain in good position. Alright, primary objective, always hold Mancho and Elsborn. Secondary hold... Hold one secondary hex for 14 turns. This awards a bonus hero. All units in the area have now been put under your command. More tank support is also available, but air power remains severely hampered by bad weather. The AI moves first. Okay. So, rapid fire for Kenneth Green and tank killer for Frank Murphy. Well, for Frank Murphy, if you're a tank killer, we're going to put you in our anti-tank unit. Seems like the logical place for... Uh, a tank unit hero and what difference does rapid fire make makes 1.5 more shots than normal yes do that for the artillery for sure give me more rapid firing artillery spreading all my heroes all over Alright, so I'm assuming I can do elite reinforcements with the prestige we carried over for everybody without limit because we're between battles, we're not during battles. We'll find out in a second here, though. Oh no. I can't? But it's between battles! Oh, I misunderstood the trait then. Okay. Damn. Okay. All right, so those are our core units from the previous battle, but then we've also got to worry about, you know, we've got we've got additional slots available to us up to 50. We know the Germans are going to be coming at us hard with a lot of tanks, presumably. stuff to deploy my units which I'm inclined to just let the forward units die and deploy back near the rear we have to tor hold Ellisborn and Munchau so 
So let's do a heavy infantry unit in Munchau. And our engineers in Elsborn. Elsborn feels more vulnerable, but I'm guessing the south is where they're going to come. Artillery support on each hex, I would think. Long times up north. We'll put our Shermans down here because they can be more rapid artillery support. I'm not going to bother trying to defend Roshroth or Valdersheed. Maybe Roshroth. I'm not sure. Alright, let's go ahead and purchase some additional units. Do I have more heroes to assign? No, I don't. Alright, let's go ahead and... Purchase more units. So we've got 14 slots. We're going to do an overstrength infantry unit. Hoping to use them as a blocking force. So actually these dotted ones are the secondaries, aren't they? There's only two of them, so... I don't imagine we'll hold either of those, but you never know. Okay. Alright, let's deploy this infantry in the side. They should probably be in a city, right? Where they're less likely to die? I guess not. That gives me six points left. Wolverines! Uh, we can do two M10 Wolverines at normal strength, so that's what we'll do. We'll deploy them in this kind of plain area. Alright. We'll see. It says the enemy goes first, so... So we ambushed the enemy recon car that came up here with a jeep. Did a decent amount of damage against it. I'm assuming the enemy's gonna have a lot of artillery. That jeep's getting rolled. So they're gonna force their way up through this trench line toward directly toward Munchau. Jack Panza. All right. So that first turn didn't go too poorly. Yeah, I'll take a six to one. Wow. 
that worked well. They're gonna sweep in and take this objective, but we just nearly destroyed a... ...lead armored element. Are these Germans over here? I don't even know where to deploy my boys. Probably bring the long toms up so they can hit the enemy infantry. I'm going to want to leave some of my infantry, probably most of them, in place. What are these? 75mm HMCs? Those have got to be artillery, right? Those are like mortar carriers, basically. It'll take a one to four. No, oh, we lost two. Anyway, de dealing some damage to the lead German units there. What's our uh, recon birds say over here? They've got a Nibbewerfer, some infantry. The north, they don't seem as spread out. Or maybe not. Spread out's probably the wrong word. I, I'm scared to use the word strong, though. What's this supply dump do? Anything? Or it's just a target for the Germans? I'm assuming the majority of the enemy armor is going to come in the south. I'm going to drive that. Wolverine out here a bit. It's not one of my core units. See what they can see. Apparently nothing down there. Maybe they're all going to come through this gap up here? Right flank seems secure. Seems likely they're going to come down this main roadway from Valdershide. I'm a little leery of deploying too aggressively forward. But I'm going to do it anyway. Charge! Bulligan's not even a major objective anyway, so... Break through this, between this, uh, south of this river. Swing west toward Ellsbourne. North of the river near Monshaw. That's probably what they're going to try and do. Is there anything else for me to do this turn? I want to leave the units that are in the cities in the cities so they can entrench. And then generally make my units that took casualties on turn one reinforce a bit so they can eat up more enemy fire on turn two. Good, so they recon me. Then they hit me with Artie, then their infantry comes in. They have the high ground, apparently. Anakin, I have the high ground! Good decision, I think, not to move that infantry out of that town in the south. So they didn't take the secondary. Okay. Already up. Go! Alright, 
to him. Out of Roshrath, we destroyed that enemy infantry. We are forward deploying, I think, with most of our boys. into the town. That anti-tank gun's gonna get destroyed, but it's not one of our core units, and we can keep hurting the enemy armor and sort of causing delays and sort of messing with their plans. At least that is my, uh, my logic. So no sign of Germans here on the southern edge of the map. Can't fly my air units because it's raining. This artillery feels wasted back here toward Ellsborn. Just sitting in the rear, not really doing anything. this infantry. Swing our recon vehicle to the south, see what they can see. Nothing really. How dug in are we? Six out of ten? I don't want to lose that. So we'll just attack with the armor and drive him back. Interesting that we didn't really... This is Vera infantry. This, these are folks. Okay. Infantry drove him back. Nominally, they're surrounded. Will they surrender? Well, I hoped maybe they would. I'm tempted, but they're just a Folk's Grenadier unit, so they can't be the main offensive there. So we will stay in the in the north. No, this is PvE, but you can play this game PvP. Just we aren't currently. for turn two. So they attack my jeep there with that recon car. What is this? The Panzer II Lucius? Lux? Lux? They destroyed our jeep with it. Nice. Our anti-tank unit did a good job there supporting the infantry there. Put a real hurt on that uh, enemy recon car. Ouch. Artillery firing from high ground on infantry in the open. Alright, so they're starting to put a real push on us in the south there. Drove us out of the secondary objective. Some of our units again real close to folding here. 
Hey, German armor in the south. We were wondering where that was. Looks like a panzer panther. Heaviest thing we've seen so far. It makes me a little nervous. they're going to destroy my tank on the next turn. The problem with this particular battle is there's a very good chance we win the fight and get ourselves destroyed long term. Because we're going to, because of our penalty for our character, we're going to lose the vast majority of our experience. Boys in the south did their thing. Best as they could, anyway. Alright, everybody, that's going to do it for today's first look at Panzer Corps 2 Frontlines Bulge, a new allied focused Battle of the Bulge DLC out for Panzer Corps 2. Uh, we did well in the first battle and won it. Uh, we probably took it not seriously enough and just sort of dinked around, but it was a victory nonetheless. And so far in the second battle, I'd say things are going reasonably well. We haven't been rolled yet. It's still very early. We've got to hold for another 13 turns, but uh, so far, so good. And we'll see how things play out in the next episode. Until the next episode, however, this is the Historical Gamer once again saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.